Welcome to the Interactive and Immersive HQ. Marco here with another one. And this time we're going to have a look at the new touch designer operator family, the so-called POPs, uh, point operators. Yeah, point operators allow us to work uh, with 3D data directly on the GPU, which means it's way faster than uh, working in SOPs uh, as they run on the CPU. And um, yeah, just to show you um, like a little example, what, what we can do with POPs and um, how to use the so-called uh, attributes that uh, POPs have. Yeah, so attributes, um, like each, each uh, POP has uh, points in it and uh, all these points have attributes. Yeah? Of course, the standard one is the position yeah, in 3D space. Um, you can also attach a color attribute, uh, the normal attribute, which is a direction uh, vector. And uh, we can also create custom uh, attributes, yeah, which is super useful. And uh, yeah, just to make an example out of that, um, I want to show you how this uh, instancing um, network works here with this kind of field that um, translates the position of uh, some of our instances. Yeah, you can see here, this is a little preview. We have all these points here. And uh, yeah, the mouse uh, is driving a field that uh, translates the position. All right, then let's do it from scratch. And first, I'm just going to import this uh, banana here that I found on CG Trader. And um, as you don't really know sometimes with uh, online uh, models, how, how the scaling of it is, I just want to normalize it first there. Yeah? So I'm just going to um, add the normalize pop here, I activate the correct aspect ratio. And uh, yeah, now it's normalized from um, zero to one. But I also want to have it centered. Uh, that way it's just easier later to uh, to know how big our force field um, should be. And yeah, I'm just gonna center it here. So set the align translate axis x y z to uh, origin and center and yeah now we have it all centered okay and now we can use make use of the sprinkle pop there maybe you know it already from sops with the sprinkle um, pop you can create uh, points either like uh, inside the volume of your 3D object or also just on the surface here. Yeah, for this case, I'm just gonna sprinkle some points now randomly on the surface. Yeah, you can change the seat here to um, uh, to randomize them. Let's maybe just create 50,000 points for now. And before we actually dive into the whole um, pop uh, attributes let's just set up an instancing network quick so that we can see our progress so i'm just gonna uh, connect this to a null and i create a geometry and the render setup so we need a camera a light the render not top <clears throat> and let's replace this standard torus here inside with a uh, the box and scale it down to something small like 0 0.01 and activate the uh, render and display flag here Okay, then 
we can activate instancing here just like we would do normally. So I choose uh, the operator here as a default instance operator. And then I choose the 0 0.0, 0 0.1, and 0.2 um, under the translate x, y, and z here. Yeah, that way we get our uh, instances, our boxes uh, rendered on each of the points. And let me also move the camera a bit closer here. And also another instance two uh, tab. Let's go to uh, rotate to vector. And here we can choose um, the normal zero, one, and two that our boxes uh, point towards their normal direction. And just to set this as the background here, plug it to null. Activate the viewer and give it a black background with an RGB key. What we can also do is maybe give the banana a material just to make it look more like a banana. Yeah, it looks fine for me. Okay, so how can we create that uh, field now to manipulate the uh, position of the points around that field? Yeah, we can insert a field pop. And, and as you can see now, we have on the bottom left here, it says weight. Yeah, this is a new attribute uh, that this uh, operator adds to all the points. And uh, yeah, we have to make use of that weight somehow to um, to be able to translate the position for instances. So first, um, here you can you can select a mode there, yeah, so that field can be a sphere, a box, a torus, or whatever here. And um, also, you can set the radius uh, because we know because we normalized our banana and we know it's. Uh, uh, and one unit long. Yeah, let's maybe create a field of 0.1, like a sphere with a radius of 0.1. And I would also like to control the uh, position of that field with uh, my mouse. So I'm just gonna add a mouse in here and we'll reference the x and y value here as the translate parameters. Okay, we don't see anything here, but uh, we can have a look at uh, here with the pop two. And just focus on the weight, and you can see now that we get here for each um, point also a weight attribute. So I don't know if you can see. Sometimes it changes here to one. So uh, the the weight right now is either zero or one. So if if that point is in uh, in the radius of our force field, um, the weight attribute is set to one, and if not, it goes back to zero. So we we want to calculate now how that weight affects uh, the point position, and we can do a number of um, math operations with with the math mix pop yeah which allows us to uh yeah to mix and match um all the attributes with uh each other so yeah we can create new attributes here and we can combine them in many different ways so the first operation we need to do yeah we need to multiply uh, the weight with uh, the normal to get uh, the direction the point uh, should move to. Yeah? So from this big list here, let's choose uh, A multiplied by B and A 
is our weight. Yeah, we can choose this attribute here. And B, we choose N for our normals. And let's call this one, you know, offset weight. With the offset weight, we have now the direction the point should move, but uh, we also have to define somehow how far the point should move from its uh, original uh, position. So for that, let's uh, create a new attribute here yeah, and call it strength. And then back to the combine, we can add another uh, operation here. And we choose the same again. And this time we choose the offset weight and combine it with uh, the strength. And here we can also set a default value for our strength. Yeah. So um, let's say we want to move the points uh, just 0.1 far away in the direction that we calculated before yeah, we can set the default value to one here and now as the last operation we just need to add to a plus b yeah, we we have our point position here p which is the standard um, position of the point before um, before we uh, want to move it with that force field and now we calculated the uh with the offset weight uh, it gives the direction and also how far the point should move fair yeah? and the result here it stays uh, p because um yeah we want to have that as our new point position here then here under output we can just uh, activate delete new attributes because uh we don't need them after that anymore. We only need them for the calculation here. And yeah, just to have it clean, you can uh, delete the new attributes here. And now you see already that when we move the mouse around, um, that all the points that are uh, in reach of that field, they move 0.1 uh, in the direction, uh, in the normal direction now. Yeah? Here we can, if we set the uh, strength to something higher, you see that they are moving uh, way more far away. So yeah, I just want to leave it here to 0 0.1. And uh, it kind of looks well not so nice now because all the points, they just move 0 0.1. Um, and we can make this more smooth by going back to that field here, uh, field pop, and just increase the transition range a little bit there. Yeah. And you see already now we don't only get uh, zero and one values, but also a more smooth kind of curve um, for the transition to that new position. And there, yeah, that's uh, already it for this uh, short example here. Uh, I hope this uh, gives you an idea about the upcoming uh, possibilities uh, that uh, we have inside Touch Designer with uh, all these new pop operators and especially the attributes, yeah, which is kind of a, yeah, just a new um, concept and way of thinking. Um, and yeah, I'm super excited what uh, what everyone will create with that in the future. Of course, you could also work, for example, here on the color. Yeah, that the that the color attributes uh, also change based on the force field or the size. Yeah, um, but yeah, for this example, we're just gonna leave it like that. And yeah, I'm super excited to uh, dive deeper into Pops uh, soon and uh, yeah, also what the community makes out of it. Hey folks, thanks for watching. If you like our YouTube content, I highly recommend you check out the interactive and immersive HQ Pro. The HQ Pro is the only comprehensive educational resource and community for immersive design, touch designer, and creative tech pros. 
In the HQ Pro trainings, we cover almost any topic you can think of, and we go way more in depth than we do in our YouTube tutorials. We have a private group where Matthew Reagan, myself, and our other industry veteran and pioneer teachers answer your questions every single day. If that sounds cool, click the link in the description to learn more. And if you enjoyed this video, hit that like button, and don't forget to subscribe for more free touch designer and immersive content.